is an introduction to JavaFX, which is the GUI toolkit currently supported by Oracle. And it's included in the JDK, so you don't have to download anything extra to use it. So you can find information at this uh, page here. So let's have a look. So this is that page. So uh, over here to the left, there are quite a lot of tutorials and, and uh, information about JavaFX. Here to the right, there's information about the scene builder, which is the GUI builder used to create um, uh, JavaFX applications. You can use it to drag and drop uh, uh, when creating the GUI. You don't have to code by hand. Uh, and over here in the middle are things you don't have to care about because it's about uh, Java Swing and Java 2D, which is another GUI toolkit. Before diving into the code, I will give a brief overview of some interesting features with JavaFX. So it gives you the ability to uh, style your application with uh, CSS. So you don't have to create like background colors, background images and so on in, in Java code or XML, but you can use cascading style sheets for that. Furthermore, uh, uh, you are able to define your GUI elements using an XML language uh, called FXML. Uh, so no need for Java programming, it, uh, neither for that. So, uh, as you see, this is a bit uh, web-like philosophy. Define elements with an XML language, so that's HTML for web, uh, web apps, and style with cascading style sheets as with uh, web apps. So that's great, because that uh, uh, gives you a clear definition of concerns and, and um, uh, uh, facilitates using a model view controller ar architecture. So with the MVC uh, architecture, the uh, user interface, the view, uh, is defined with uh, uh, FXML and styled with the CSS. And the controller is also defined in the FX FXML document and it's a, a Java object. And the, the model is, has nothing to do with, with uh, JavaFX, it's your plain Java objects. Uh, furthermore, uh, JavaFX includes a GUI builder, uh, namely the uh, scene builder. Um, so whatever IDE you use, you can use the scene builder to create your uh, user interface. You don't have to code it by hand using neither XML nor Java. Uh, JavaFX uh, uses hardware acceleration where possible for rendering. But if there is no hardware available, there's also a software rendering stack. Uh, there is support for both 2D and uh, 3D graphics. There is quite a lot of media support for videos, and sounds and printing and whatever you consider to be media. Um, there is touchscreen support. And, and there are APIs for lots of various things, like for example, creating shards. Well, and there are many other things as well. So it's a quite extensive GUI toolkit. Now let's have a look at the, some of the major concepts of JavaFX. And uh, we'll do that with the help of this uh, very small Hello World application here. That has just this one button, and when I click it, it prints Hello World over here. First, let's look at the application lifecycle. So a uh, JavaFX application uh, must have a class, hello world in this case, that extends the application class, uh, JavaFX application application. Um, so application is in the JavaFX application package, uh, as you can see up here. Provided it's a standalone application, and not run in a, a browser or something. There must be a main method which calls launch on the application class, and that is what will start um, JavaFX. 
So I pass in the uh, uh, command line arguments here in case uh, there should be any parameters that are used by the JavaFX, but that is not the case in this very simple application. Okay, so then there's the start method. Uh, and that's where the actual GUI should be constructed, as is also the case here. Before the uh, start method is uh, executed, uh, there's also then init me method that could be uh, executed. Um, should look like this. So here in the init method, uh, we could uh, we should place code that would normally go in the uh, um, constructor of a class, because this is where where the application class is completely created. So here here we place initialization code, but it, there's no requirement to write the init method. The application class has a default implementation which does nothing. Uh, but we have to write the start method because there's no uh, default application of the start method, and that's where we construct the GUI. Then we could also write a stop method if we wish. So it should look like this. And in there, we should write code that's executed when the application is stopped. Uh, before terminating, the stop method will always be called. So that's the application lifecycle, init, start, stop. So now you know how to start a JavaFX application. Uh, next thing you must understand is the concepts are the concepts stage, scene and graph which are uh, very important in the JavaFX application. So first, uh, first thing, stage. So a stage is a main window, um, like uh, this window, the entire window. The thing that interacts with the operating system's windowing toolkit. So that, that's the stage. So everything in the JavaFX application must be located in the stage. Um, and the um, uh, JavaFX will create the primary stage for us and pass it to the start method. Uh, and that's what we should use to display user interface. So in the um, Hello World application, the stage is the, the entire window. Uh, we can create uh, additional stages if we want to create more windows. Okay, that's the first thing, a stage. Next thing, scene. So a scene is the entire content of the stage, this area here. And the scene, the, the principal uh, purpose of a scene is to contain the scene graph. So the scene is created on this line of code here. Uh, the, these two integers specify the size of the scene and this one specifies the uh, root node in the scene graph. So that's the next thing to understand, the scene graph. So a JavaFX application uh, always consists of a scene graph. Everything that can be that you can see in the user interface is part of the scene graph. That's just the stage and the scene, and then everything else is in the graph. So uh, the scene, this area here, uh, contains the root node. Uh, in this application, root node here is this um, flow pane created over here. So that's the root node. Um, so this is typical uh, JavaFX uh, con uh, construction. The root node is a pane that can uh, lay out its children in some specified manner. More about layout later. 
Um, here we have added two children to the root node, uh, the BTN node here, and the um, result label node here. Okay, so there, there are two children. BTN and um, result label. So the scene graph has uh, one node for each component that can be displayed in the user interface. There are three kinds of nodes, the root, the bottom level, the top or top level if you wish, and the branch nodes. Here there is uh, really no branch node. A branch node has more than a branch node has children, and uh, leaf nodes which have no children. So the purpose of the scene graph is to reflect everything that all components that exist in the JavaFX application. And the scene graph will know what parts of the screen are occupied by each component in the graph, uh, how to draw it, when to draw it, and, and uh, so on. So this means the uh, JavaFX application, and in particular the scene graph, will know everything about uh, how the user interface is to be drawn on the screen.